And the husband man was in the true vine. For he said, I am the true vine, and my father, or the spirit, is the husband man. Letting you know that the spirit of God is responsible for the creation and the formation of the seed of David, son of God, son of man, Jesus. Are oh, you listening to the old man? So Jesus is talking here. Yes. Why do ye not understand my speech? Why you don't understand what I'm saying? Even because ye cannot hear my words. You cannot hear my words. Come on, Sam. Ye are of your father, the devil. What? Ye are of your father, the devil. Hmm. Do you hear this? Ye are of your father, the devil. The devil. And the lust and of the your father. And the desire of your father. He will do. He will do it. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a murderer. From, from the, the beginning. beginning. And abode not in the truth. And he did not stay in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. Do you hear that? Hmm. You know when God put me in this. He put me in it to stay it. Stay right in it. Oh, yeah. I don't have no desire to go out of it. No. no. Backsliding is just not on my agenda. Hallelujah. It's not on my agenda. Oh, yeah. Amen. I can say by God's permission. And by the numerous of divine experiences that I have had and having and will have. I want to say, how you know you're going to have them? Because uh, my father have not left me alone. Wonderful. Amen. He didn't send me out here, then knock off. There's plenty much more to do. I will never backslide. I can say that. I've gotten to that point in God years ago, and God brought me to that point. I will never, ever backslide or leave the Lord at all. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You want to get to that point, don't you? Yeah. You wives said, I will never leave my husband. All right. And why you can't say you will never leave, you, you, you won't leave God. Mm. You husband say, I will never leave my wife. Fine, but why can't you say you will never leave God? You want God to get you into the spiritual side of him. Yeah. I'm waking up now already. Wonderful, Glory wonderful, to God. wonderful. That you know, hallelujah, that you know you will never leave him. Yeah. Never. Oh, really take God. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. Never. You know, I thought of Brother Paul. Paul said on one occasion, all men forsook me. He said, no man stood with me. He said, but God stood with me and strengthened me that the preaching might be fully known through all the Gentiles. You want to get to a point in God where you can look heaven in the face. And say, Lord, I will never. I didn't say you won't get weak. But if I get weak, I'd rather get weak in God than get weak in the world. For if I'm weak in God, God said, let the weak say I'm strong. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. What did he say? You are of your father, the devil. The world. They of the devil. And the love. And the desire of, of the devil father. they will perform. He was a murderer. He was a from murderer. The There's more than one way to murder. That's it. Murderer from the beginning. So the first murder did not take place here on earth. With Cain and Abel. 
the first murder took place in heaven. Well, wait a minute, Pastor Dennis. How can anyone be killed in heaven and there was no blood shed? <laughs> There's more than one way to murder. You can murder without spilling blood by the usage of your tongue. Satan murdered the divine character of the whole third of angels. When he said, I'm going to be like the most high and war broke out in heaven, all those that side with him, their spiritual character that linked them to God, not just in nature, but in behavior, Satan murdered that influence. And they sided with him. Backsliding started in heaven. Treason started in heaven. And when Satan was cast out of heaven to the earth, now the whole characteristics of Satan is here on earth. And that's why so many of God's people temporarily have the Holy Ghost. Mm. Think of it. God fill you with the Holy Ghost. He thought enough of you. Hallelujah. 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 You tarried. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Five, Hallelujah. ten, fifteen years. Hallelujah. Turning your plate down. Calling on the name of the Lord. God hear you. God fill you. And then your backside. Hallelujah. Don't let Hallelujah. your tarrying be in vain. Glory to God. If you backslide, thank your God that you're still alive. Giving you a chance to come back to Him. That's it. The Apostle John said, Do your first works, you have to do them over. You know it's Hallelujah. a Hallelujah. blessing. Life is a gift. Hallelujah. And for us to be lent this gift and then leave the Lord and then Lord, the Lord is still patient enough to bring you back to him. A second chance? And for some, a third chance? And for some, a fourth chance. Don't take God's mercy in vain. Come on, Moretti, let's have it. You are of your father, the devil. Yeah. And the lust of your father, ye will do. Man. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. He wouldn't stay in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. Just nothing right in him. When he speaketh a lie. When he... Speaketh a lie. a lie. He speaketh of his own. He speak of his own. For he is a liar. What? For he is a liar. <laughs> and the father of it. Satan is a liar. Father of it means he's the originator of lies. That's it. The first lie was told by him. And he told a whole litany of lies. I'm going to exalt myself above the stars. That's a lie. I'm going to be like the most high. That's a lie. He's going to set his kingdom up in the north. All that was lies. Boasting. The one thing about a repetitious liar, somebody believe him or her. Are you listening? Amen. They can make it as fair seeming. Uh, I was watching a few weeks ago. Uh, as I mentioned about my wicked cousin who never was saved, never was born again. He's just a sinner, Jamal Bryant. Went and apologized to the homosexual community. But he also got over the air and said, Jesus, while he was here, did practically everything wrong. He said, Jesus did practically everything wrong. Did practically everything wrong. Even Kenneth Copeland said that same thing, that God, he made a mess in all what he was doing. You know, these men have gotten so high-minded and so arrogant and so full of hell, they got the characteristics of the devil because the spirit of Satan is a bold spirit. 
that boldly retaliate and boldly curses God. Yes. Now the devil will make you bold. Yes. Because when you curse God, you're not only bold, you're a bold fool. Yes. Huh? Think of it when you was in the world. Look how bold you were. Look how many times you said, got so and so. Didn't you do it? Didn't you do it? Some of you still do it. You are bold fool. Are you listening? And uh, the Bible says God have no pleasure in fools. Imagine living on this earth, a human being, and God don't get no pleasure out of your breathing. For he said he don't have no pleasure in fools. None. Can you imagine that? You're made for God's glory, and yet he made you and get no pleasure out of you. He don't even get pleasure out of his own creation. When you're a fool, that's one part of creation. He don't get no pleasure out of you. You're just walking around here in vain. My God, we want you to stop living in vain and put some substance in your life. And the greatest substance in life is God himself. Listen. You are of your father the devil. You are of your father the devil. And the lust of your Turn father. Turn me ready up some more back there. I need, I need to crank them up louder back there. The lust of your father. He will do. You will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a murderer from the beginning. And a bold not in the truth. Yes. Because there is no truth in him. And? When he speaketh a lie. Yes. He speaketh of his own. He do what? He speaketh of his own. He speak of his own. For, man. for he is a liar. He is a liar. And the father of it. <laughs> And the father of it. Look at the lies he got out. People are loyal to it. And one thing I say about the devil lies. People speaking in some tongue. That's true. Jumping and shaking. What spirit you're of? What spirit you're of? Because the anointing of God don't come on nobody when a lie is preached. That's right. That's true. Mm -mm, no. Whatever you felt in falsehood when a lie was preached, that's not God. No. So I'm saying, what? Oh, no. God don't move on you and quicken you and speak in tongue off a lie. Spirit of truth works with spirit of truth. That's it. Hmm? Woman get up and preach. I'm in falsehood even if I don't know no better. The Holy Ghost know better. So the Holy Ghost ain't going to make me speaking in tongues. Holy Ghost is not going to do that. I, I'm not speaking in tongue as the spirit of the living God give utterance and a woman is up preaching. Mm -mm, no, God ain't going to condemn it and then deal with me to agree with it. Homosexual is up preaching. I don't care if the homosexual preaching about baptism and Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. Uh, God ain't going to move on me speaking in tongue and shaking off an abomination. The Holy Ghost, if the Bible says the Holy Ghost do not behave itself unseemly, it ain't nobody going to make me believe something opposite. If the Holy Ghost move on me, somebody's telling the truth. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Like prophecy. If you get about two and three and four and five people up prophesying at one time, that's not God. No, that is not God. The only time you find a bunch of people prophesying at once, they was always being moved on by the devil. Mm -mm. When God moved on someone to prophesy and if something's revealed to another, they got to hold their peace. That's right. For God don't send five and ten messages at once. No. That's confusion. You got all these online prophetess and online prophets. And let me tell you, folk, amen, that goes for you folk that's in First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's some of you trying to start this little online prophecy club. I'm going to beat that back into hell. <laughs> Hear me? Oh, online prophecy, that's an online lie. The Holy Ghost don't behave itself unseemly. You know, a lot of you folks sit and listen to the word. No, you hear the word, but you ain't listening to it. Hey Amen. I saw when somebody come to me, Pastor Jennings, I'm a prophet. Pastor Jennings, I'm a prophet. This. Pastor Jennings, I'm an eagle. Pastor Jennings, I'm a bird. Pastor Jennings, the bird is the word. I don't care what they say. 
I'm going to evaluate it. And see that it come from God. I'm going to look at your behavior. And compare it to the book. And if you brothers or sisters online and all of y'all prophesying two and three together, that's from hell. God don't have a bunch of people prophesying at one time. That's confusion. Oh, Hananiah tried that stuff. And then uh, he ran up on Jeremiah. And Jeremiah knew the Lord after Hananiah said what he had to say. Jeremiah said, Amen. <laughs> then the word of the Lord, who will take God, came back to Jeremiah. He told Hananiah, you know, because Hananiah said that Israel will not serve under the yoke of the king. That's right. But God told Jeremiah that Israel will serve under the yoke of the king. That's two different messages. Somebody going to come and tell Brother Nate, thus said the Lord. The Lord said you're going to die uh, this Friday at 12 midnight. Don't tremble. <laughs> because if he breathes one second at the 12 midnight, you a liar. Do you know what prophecy is? When I was in a false church, they would quote the scripture about prophesying according to the proportion of faith. And they thought that means that they can just say something, and if they believe it, it'll happen. You fool. They don't work like that. Just like God anoint me to preach, God anoint you to prophesy. If God move on Brother Joseph to prophesy, and Brother Joseph prophesy under the inspiration of God, guaranteed that thing's going to come to pass. But if he prophesied by his own fruition and his own feeling, that thing going to fall to the ground because God going to let it fall. But when God talk, whenever God talk, God always stand behind it. God don't throw out his word where you can make him out of a liar. Hallelujah. My God. Brother, when God, that's why I'm so dedicated to what God says. When God says you can bank on it. That's right. Bank on it. Glory to God. When I was in falsehood, the false prophet prophesied to me. Amen. When I told him, he ain't had no prophecy until I told him about the work God showed me. The moment I told him about the work, the devil got in the prophesy. Thus said the Lord. Uh, you ain't going to amount to nothing. You know, he, he, in fact, he prophesied that if me and sister, uh, my wife, get married, she would never have a child, no children. He prophesied this. He's standing there. He said she would be sick all her life. All her life. And wouldn't have one child. And here we got seven. Are you listening? Amen. So you that's out there, call yourself prophesying. If the word of God is being preached under the inspiration of the Lord, how are you prophesying two and three and four and five at the same time the word is being preached? That's confusion. If God wants the people to know anything, you know, in the days of uh, Ahab, there was a prophet named Micaiah, the son of Embla. And Micaiah wanted some territory, or rather Ahab wanted some territory called Ramoth Gilead. And uh, Jehoshaphat, he wanted to know what the Lord would say about it. So uh, after Ahab got uh, about 400 liars, Jehoshaphat says, is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides? He, he, he knew it didn't take over 400 fellows to say what the Lord says. And uh, even Jeho uh, Ahab had to admit, he said, there's yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Emla." by whom we may inquire, he said, but I hate him. 
And then he gave the reason why he hated him. He said, because he don't speak nothing good of me but evil. Because Micaiah always refer to what the Lord says. And if you want to see what's really in somebody, refer them to what the word of God says. You will get a fight. You will get an argument because they want your opinion first and want God, what God says second. Give me what God says first and don't give me what you say ever. Give me what God say first because his word don't change. That's right. All right, go back to the book of John. Listen at this. In St. John chapter 8 and at verse 44. Parliament. You are of your father the devil. You are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. What is it? He was a murderer from the beginning. And, and abode not in the truth. Yes. Because there is no truth in him. Mm -hmm. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Yes. For he is a liar. He is a liar. And the father of it. And the originator of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. <laughs> what? And because I tell you, you know, the truth, you can tell a person the truth, they won't believe it. You when believe a person's mind is already made up, you can talk to them until they die. And if the Lord resurrect them from the dead, they're going to come back. I don't believe it. <laughs> huh? I don't believe. And, and you find people like that, yet they want you to believe them. They want you to believe whatever come out of their mouth. Do you hear this? And because I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. Ye believe me not. That's the way you are, many of you that are watching. We go to the Bible for everything. Folks not used to seeing a preacher that go to the Bible for everything. In fact, most folks not used to seeing a preacher that go to the Bible for anything. Less more everything. That's right. We take you to the Bible to show you yourself. And show you what God says concerning his creation. And yet we tell you the truth. And then what? And because I tell you the truth, because you believe me not. I tell you the truth, you don't believe it. Uh -huh. Which of you convinced me of sin? Which of you convinced me of sin? And if I say the truth. If I say the truth. Why do you not believe me? Why you don't believe what's written, viewers? Why many of you here want to take somebody else's opinion and they thought and their personal feelings over the Bible. Something is wrong with that man or woman. I don't care who you are. And I've been saying this for years. Anytime somebody can bring you the word of God and your only respond is, I don't want what the Bible said. Give me your opinion. Use a fool. That's true. Hey man, if you got the Holy Ghost, use a fool. Because a person that's got the Holy Ghost and is spiritual minded. First thing they want is what the first and the last have said. That's it. And God is the first and the last. Yes. That would be your first interest, your major priority, and your top concern. Let us see what God says about this, what God says about that. And every time we lean to our understanding, we make a mess all the time. Amen. There are so many people. There are preachers get mad at me because I won't take their own leaning to their understanding. I'm not, I don't care nothing about your understanding. All I'm interested in what the Bible says. That's it. That's what I am. Give, give me Bible attached to it. When you get Bible attached to it, I know it's right. Don't you know everything in this life is tied to Bible? Everything. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Everything. You can't name one thing that's not tied to Bible. Amen. Nothing. There's not an invention out here that's not tied to Bible. Someone said, what? The Bible says about man that he uh, seek out many inventions. Then another scripture that talks about what man will do, he will be inventors of evil things. So you got some inventions that are evil, and then you got some inventions that the church can use for God's glory. All of it tie in with Bible. Whether it's telephone, whether it's internet, whether it's a train, a plane, a car, an electric car, I don't care what it is. It's all right here. That's right. Television, telephone, radio, everything. Somebody said television is of the devil. It depends upon how you use it. That's the lesser of the eye. That's right. But when that scripture was written, there was no television around. But the lesser of the eye still took place. That's right. You don't need a television to fulfill eyelash. No. no, all you got to do is ask a man who go in Club 87. Amen. <laughs> hey He's sitting right there full of eyelash, making it rain. 
Why that woman come down on the pole upside down like she about to break her neck? He ain't think about no television. But he's fulfilling eyelids. That woman that's looking at that man from top to bottom and done stripped him out of his clothes with her mind and her heart and her eyes. Ain't no television in front of her as far as a screen, but there is a live vision that's telling her something. All right, listen. Amen. One bishop wrote me, he, he, he condemned me for being on television, and he said, uh, he made a quote that I heard before. He said, if television was of God, Pastor Jennings, then a holy man would be making them. And uh, so he asked me, you know, a lot of these bishops often leave their number so I can call them. So I called the bishop. I said, I got your letter, brother. And uh, he said, oh, yeah. And I said, uh, so uh, I'm, I'm a false prophet because I'm on television? He said, yes, you're a false prophet. He said, now the thing about it, you're telling the truth. <laughs> my, my, I said, uh, if I'm a false prophet being on television, how do you listen to me? He said, I... He said, I watch you on the internet. Now, I don't know why you folk think that if you watch me on internet, that's not a form of television. In fact, it's broader than the regular television. It, it, it's, your phone is now a television. Uh, your computer is now a television. So it's, it's still a form of television. You think... Unless you're turning a knob to various channels, well, you got all that stuff on social media. And he said, well, if, if television was of God, Pastor Jennings, uh, you, it should be a holy, sanctified man, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, built in television, if, if it was of God. I said, so you're watching me on Internet? He said, yes. I said, what holy, sanctified man uh, is responsible for Google, YouTube, the worldwide the World Wide Web, TikTok, uh, Instagram, and all that. Yes, he did get quiet. And then I asked him, you listen at the radio? He said, I listen at it all the time. I said, well, Holy Sanctified Company built it. I said, do you drive? He said, yes. I said, what Holy Sanctified, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, uh, man uh, built your car? I said, what kind of car you got? He said, well, I got a Cadillac. I said, oh, okay. Well, who, who's, the, who's baptized over there in the Cadillac dealer? <laughs> my, my, my. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> he bust out laughing. He said, I see what you mean now. I said, it's sad. I gotta, it takes all that. You know, sometimes you got to take the crowbar of the Bible and pry <laughs> the understanding open. <laughs> Any invention under the sun. You can use an invention that man invented that's right, that's right. and use it for God's glory or of the devil. Of the devil. That's right. Certainly you can. That's right. Amen. Look at electricity. If I'm an electrician, I ain't got no business wiring no club. Let you dance in the dark and go to hell in the outer darkness. Amen. So there's many inventions out there. We have to go to the Bible and see what can we use That's right. and what we can't use and how we can use it. Right. We are using social media, television, radio, and every form of social media we can get to push this gospel out. And I thank God for the different Truth of God venues out there. Uh, Tony Harvin and C-Rock and many others that's pushing this message out there. And they're pushing it too. Hey, Brother Jairu over there in the Philippines, they're pushing it out. So many farms, people are taking this message and putting a little excerpt on it. Amen. And someone sent me a post of these two fellows. I don't know who they are, but I know they sent us. When I was preaching against homosexuality, they were two twins. Amen. And they took the exit of the message when I was saying, you want to know what a woman is? Your mama. <laughs> well, they aired it. Yeah, they, aired, they, aired that sec they aired that segment. They knew it was the truth. And one man said, wow, that's a real preacher right there. Mm. He, said, hey, he said, it ain't no more preachers like him no more. That's right. So I don't care if you take a segment of the message. Go ahead. As long as you get the truth out. And that segment going to judge you throughout eternity. God have a way of sparking your interest. 
That's why when people hear all of these different subjects that the truth of God deal with across the board, they don't hear them in other churches. They just don't hear them because the preachers are not dealing with them. That's right. What did he say? And because I tell you the truth. Because. I tell you the truth. We are telling you what's right. Ye believe me not. They don't believe it. All right, let's go to work. Hear me good. Eighth chapter of the book of John come to mind. And begin at verse 43. St. John chapter 8. And at verse 43. I bring my ready up. Bring my ready up. Bring them up real loud. All right, Moretti, come on so I can hear what you sound like. St. John chapter 8, and at verse 43. All right. Why do you not understand my speech? Do you hear Jesus? Why, Why do you not understand do you not my speech? <coughs> understand what I'm telling you. Even because you cannot hear my word. Even what? Even because. Even because ye cannot hear my word. You're not listening. Amen. You know, hearing and listening is two different things. Amen. I see a lot in my travel, and I thank God that God have just opened up the world for us to go to like he did to the apostles. I don't mean just go. I mean gave us results all the time. That's a testimony within itself. All the time, and let me say this, to remind everybody, oh yes, to my convention committee and to all the first church photographers uh, here in America, next Sunday, mandatory convention meeting. This is a different meeting. It's not just centered around the convention. We are also making plans for dedication. December 28th through December 31st. So therefore, our format is different. Our outline for pictures is different. And the thickness of our program is different. Because it's going to represent history this time. Amen. 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 I want the folk to see where we came from. So it's a mandatory meeting. All photographers that do photography for the truth of God. You have to be here in headquarters on the fourth floor. All members <clears throat> of the convention team, four o'clock next Sunday. Whatever you have planned, I'm canceling it. If you have plans to go somewhere, too bad, be here. We got the work of God on the table. Amen, I'll be in Memphis, Tennessee for a church business meeting and then I'll hop in the plane and coming right back here. Again, this week coming. Amen. I, I, it's just the, the work just has me going all over the place. Amen. It, it takes a lot to build. But overnight, things can be torn down. That's right. God didn't just send us to build. God sent us to protect what's being built. I won't let nobody tear it down or not even use the wrong tool to hit up against a brick of the church. Are you listening? Amen. You know, some folks say, Pastor Jen, you need a vacation. And some of the folks that tell you that is some of the same ones that deprive you of rest. Are you listening? Amen. Amen. So to my convention team, Sunday at 4 o'clock, all of you, be there. And to my photographers, all of you, be there. It is necessary. This is the time that God knows we all been waiting for. And I mean, we've been waiting for it, too. Uh, those, uh, what you call them, Tron things? <laughs> I, I think of Mega or Prime. Me, too. <laughs> the Jumbotron. If you see the ones out there on the tower, uh, they did a trial run early in the week. The webcast was, you can see it right out there on the tower. Amen. It was out there showing on the tower, the webcast, from the, the message being preached. Amen. So that's wonderful. So Monday, the scaffolds, practically, practically all the, almost all the scaffolds are out the main auditorium now. But they'll be dusting from top to bottom, hand vax, wet vax, everything. Grouting is almost done, marbles being put up. I had to design a 
another area for William, so they're cutting that marble and going to bring it up and put it together. Uh, that would be all situated out the way to finish the final touches of the painting, the large jumbo screen that's up. Uh, everything is looking good. Wonderful. So this will be the lower auditorium where we are now will be an overflow. And the gymnasium will be a second overflow. And it still won't be able to hold the people. So on the day of dedication, if brothers want to stand up and, and because we run out of seating and want to stand up around the auditorium, let them. Let them stand up around the auditorium if they want to. And line the walls. Amen. Because we're, we're looking to offer this place back unto God that lent it to us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The vision that God gave me is bigger than Lindley Avenue. Oh, that's right, that's right. Someone said, I can't see it, Pastor Jennings. I know. Many of you that came over here from Frankfurt couldn't see this. You was in Frankfurt Avenue looking at the support beams, and some of you were so content sitting looking at us like we have a, a picture frame. So content, you know, some folks satisfied if they don't go, no progress, nowhere. Amen. And God Almighty just didn't put that in me. He, he, whenever God sent a man and give him an assignment, that man is assigned to build to God's glory. And that's my God-given assignment, to build a work for God. And building this work, you building a people. And uh, I'm a mason. Not Scottish Rite or Prince Hall, not that. But I'm a biblical mason. And the Bible calls the church lively stones. And God have to put you in the building, the church, the body, the bride, God's wife. My job, hear me good, as a scriptural mason, I have to go to the Bible and make sure the stones are in place. And uh, if one is protruding out too far, what you mean? They got out of their place. I have to take the hammer of the Bible and put you back in place. You may not like me tapping on you. <laughs> and you won't like me tapping on you. But uh, I'm going to do it. Amen. I'm going to do it, I said. Why? Because God, the great Jehovah, has entrusted me with his word. Now, I know for some folks say, I know somebody but I God doesn't trust nobody. verse 43 again. Let's go to work. Why do you not understand my speech? Jesus talking. God manifested in the flesh. God manifested in the flesh. That flesh, son of God, son of man, son of David, seed of David, offspring of David, only begotten of the father, Lamb of God, sacrifice of God, apostle, minister, servant, true vine. 
and the husband man was in the true vine. For he said, I am the true vine, and my father, or the spirit, is the husbandman. Letting you know that the spirit of God is responsible for the creation and the formation of the seed of David, son of God, son of man, Jesus. Are oh, you listening to the old man? So Jesus is talking here. Yes. Why do ye not understand my speech? Why you don't understand what I'm saying? Even because ye cannot hear my words. Ye cannot hear my words. Come on, son. Ye are of your father, the devil. What? Ye are of your father, the devil. Hmm. Do you hear this? Ye are of your father, the devil. The devil. And the lust and of the your father. And the desire of your father. He will do. He will do it. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a murderer. From, from the, the beginning. beginning. And abode not in the truth. And he did not stay in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. Did you hear that? Hmm. You know when God put me in this. He put me in it to stay it. Stay right in it. Oh, yeah. I don't have no desire to go out of it. No. no. Backsliding is just not on my agenda. Hallelujah. It's not on my agenda. Oh, yeah. Amen. I can say by God's permission. And by the numerous of divine experiences that I have had and having and will have. I want to say, how you know you're going to have them? Because uh, my father has not left me alone. Wonderful. Amen. He didn't send me out here, then knock off. There's plenty much more to do. I will never backslide. I can say that. I've gotten to that point in God years ago, and God brought me to that point. I will never, ever backslide or leave the Lord at all. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. You want to get to that point, don't you? Yeah. You wives said, I will never leave my husband. All right. And why you can't say you will never leave, you, you, you won't leave God. Mm. You husband say, I will never leave my wife. Fine, but why can't you say you will never leave God? You want God to get you into the spiritual side of him. And I'm waking up now already. Wonderful, Glory wonderful, to God. wonderful. That you know, hallelujah, that you know you will never leave him. Yeah. Never. Oh, really take God. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. Never. You know, I thought of Brother Paul. Paul said on one occasion, all men forsook me. He said, no man stood with me. He said, but God stood with me and strengthened me that the preaching might be fully known through all the Gentiles. You want to get to a point in God where you can look heaven in the face. <laughs> 